Commercial divers Allie Jackson and David Moorfield are getting ready for their shift. They're used to working in highly pressurized deep ocean sites. But this isn't your typical dive. That's because there's no water involved. These highly specialized divers aren't underwater. They're in a tunnel boring machine 50 meters below the surface of the earth. And it's currently stopped in New Westminster, BC, directly underneath this small, to be exact. The tunnel boring machine, or TBM for short, has been digging the new Anasis water supply tunnel underground from Surrey to New Westminster. This is what the tunnel boring machine's cutter head looked like before it started digging the tunnel. Its cutting tools are designed to chew their way through many types of earth. As the machine advances through the ground, um, it naturally bits of it wear away. They're armored up and uh, designed to kind of be resistant against that abrasion. But eventually, you have to get out there and replace those wear tools periodically. At the start of their shift, the divers are examined to make sure that they're medically fit for the hazardous work ahead. They'll be working in a highly pressurized environment just behind the cutter head. So even though they won't be underwater, this work still demands the same rigorous approach to safety as a deep ocean dive. The technical support crew members are crammed into the TBM's tight quarters. The crew pressurizes the area behind the cutter head by pumping in compressed air. This prevents dirt and rocks from collapsing into the space and creates a safe bubble for the divers. They'll have to crawl from the decompression chamber to the tool room, both of which are also pressurized to help their bodies adjust. Then they can crawl into the cutter head area. If they lose the pressure on, on that bubble, then we could have cave-in, water, uh, rocks, the gravel, any of the sand coming in, and it wouldn't, it's not coming in at a slow pace. It will be a, a catastrophic cave-in. The divers will often practice their tasks ahead of time to be as efficient as possible once they're underground. That's because just like during an ocean dive, the divers can only stay in the pressurized environment for a short time. Every second counts, so when you're in there, you're just kind of trying to get everything done as, as safely as possible, but also as quickly as possible too. Also, just like on ocean dives, these divers' lives depend on these tanks of oxygen, nitrogen, and helium a mix that's pumped to them. The pressure in the work area is raised to a safe level for the divers. The divers go into the pressurized area, and once the door closes, the dive officially begins. High five. Their voices are now squeaky because of the helium they're breathing. The divers quickly gather up gear in the tool room before unbolting the hatch door that leads to the back of the cutter head. This day's work involves air arcing, which is somewhat similar to welding. And in this pressurized space, sparks are extremely dangerous. With the added pressures, everything becomes a lot more flammable and can catch on fire almost instantly because as you press down, the molecules press down, you have more oxygen molecules in there. They are wearing a lot of uh, fire resistant gear. And then we have water on at all times because if there is a spark that gets on anything, it's more combustible at those higher pressures. The cutter head is designed so that its cutting tools can be removed from the back, making replacement work easier. But because the divers can only stay in this space for less than an hour at a time, just three hours of work gets done in a 24-hour period. So replacing these cutting tools takes weeks. After 50 minutes of work, the countdown starts. So we got about, uh, we only got a couple minutes of working time left. The divers have to get back into the tool room and bolt the hatch shut. If they delay too long, the built-up nitrogen in their system will start to bubble out in a potentially deadly syndrome called the bends. Then it's into the cramped decompression chamber for the next five hours, where their bodies will slowly release the nitrogen and adjust to ground level pressure. A danger-filled job like this is not for everyone, but the rewards are very personal. This work is very technical, it is very dangerous, but it's also thrilling. It's a thrill for all of us. It's the same thing with tunneling underground. It's, it's the thrill of it. 
So far, the TBM has tunneled two kilometers and is just 100 meters from its destination in New Westminster. But the ground here is made up of very dense glacial sediment, so the rest of the tunneling will be challenging. We got a lot of tough ground to get through to get to the north shaft, and then we got to break in, but very close to the finish line here, and once we do break in, that's a, a big accomplishment. The new Anasis Water Supply Tunnel will be one of the five new marine crossings in the region built to withstand a major earthquake. 